Hello again everyone, Dr. Dan Bachman here. Today, we're going to go through a new video series. I'll start it today. Um, and this is a case study. So which this is following one patient's case over the course of recovery and treatment. And the, the twist on this is that the patient is me. So um, we're going to follow my recent diagnosis. So unfortunately about a month ago I got my first colonoscopy and they found a mass in my colon and it's a big one it's the size of a softball so in the diagnosis did a biopsy and it came back as colorectal cancer so uh, first of all of course no one wants to hear this I don't want to hear it don't want to have to be talking about it but it's here so it's something to deal with and I figured I'd shoot some videos on the different stages of this process so that, uh, well, for my friends and family can kind of keep up, up to date on where I am in treatment and recovery. And also for anyone who's going through this process themselves or wants to prevent or avoid this kind of thing going on, um, use me as an example. And, and if you are going through this process yourself, at least you kind of know what's coming and what the experience is like. So, so I'm gonna try to give each of the, all the tests and imaging and procedures. I haven't gotten into treatment yet, but so basically I have colorectal cancer that's colon, it's, it's cancer of the distal colon. So your, your intestines, you've got about 21 feet of them. You got a lot of them. Um, the colon is the last bit and it starts on your right side, runs up and across in the transverse colon and then descending colon becomes uh, rectum sigmoid colon and then it goes out. So mine is the very, toward the very end. It's only ab about like three inches away from the end. Um, I've been having symptoms gradually and progressively worsening for about a year and a half. But it, um, it, it mimicked a lot of other things. But long story short, um, I was late to get diagnosed and uh, I'm currently going and, and there, I'll go into detail on why that happened. It was kind of a comedy of mistakes and errors. Uh, but, but the point is I am where I am today and I'm getting taken care of it now. So uh, colonoscopy, which is a camera that they examine the colon and they look for polyps, they look for malignancies and in my case they found one and they completely explain all my bowel issues that I've been having over the, <clears throat> excuse me, the last year and a half. So basically 20 to 30 bowel movements a day uh, and the reason, and they're all very, they're all small and difficult. I won't go into too much detail there, but basically the, the colon is a tube that, that needs to carry things through it and the tumor has closed down the tube so there's just not as much room. So that, that leads to the kind of symptoms that I've had. Now, first step after my diagnosis was I was referred immediately by my gastroenterologist who did the colonoscopy to a colorectal surgeon. So he's a specialist in this specific area. So he's a surgeon, he's highly specialized, but he looks just at this area. And I gotta say, I cannot be happier with any of my care team. Oh, they're, they're all fantastic. I have Dr. Lakshman. Um, he's a rock star, spent tons of time. I'm here in Austin, so we've got great healthcare here. So Dr. Lakshman went over in detail with uh, what the, the treatment course would be if it was an early stage versus a late stage. Early stage, there are four stages of cancer and I'm assuming he means uh, stages one or two would be early and stages three or four would be late stage, which you don't want. Um, if it's an early stage, they would go straight to just uh, doing a bowel resection, which is cut out the, the section of the pipe that has the tumor and then take the end and, and attach it to the end, the sphincter, and then you just have a new, short, slightly shorter uh, section of bowel there, to which your body adapts surprisingly well. Um, now, if it's a later stage, which it's looking like it's going to be, we're still in the diagnostic process, but um, if it's a later stage, then there's, there's chemo and radiation therapy involved in there as well. Um, but but my, back to my surgeon. So he said, we're definitely going to do the bowel resection, which is take out the chunk that's bad, reattach it. And, w and when we do that, you can't use, you can't just let your food go through that new, newly attached section. You have to bypass it. So I'll be using a, 
um, an ileostomy, which is a bag on the outside of me on my right side. So basically, it's just a, it diverts all the food that you're digesting. It doesn't let it go all the way through the colon. It sends it out side of you in <laughs> a nice convenient little bag right on, on, your, on your belly there. Now that's only, the bag is only there until this attachment heals, which I, I think it may be a couple of weeks or something. Then I have the ileostomy removed, have that closed up there, and then we let food go through um, the normal full route that it would throughout the intestine. So, um, so I have my surgeon on my team, but he says we need to get you to an oncologist first. So an oncologist is just a cancer specialist. They're gonna, your oncologist is your, if you have cancer, they're kind of like the, the quarterback. So they manage all the other specialists that you'll be seeing, and they, they have kind of the overview of your care. And mine is fantastic. So Dr. Haramio is my oncology uh, specialist. She's fantastic here at Texas Oncology. Uh, spent tons of time, very empathetic, anticipating all my questions, answering questions, just like Dr. Lakshman. Um, just wonderful. She just called me from Hawaii. She's on vacation in Hawaii right now, and she left me a message and said, hey, I've been thinking about you a lot. Just wanted to let you know, I did get a chance to review your CT scan, which I just had while she was on vacation. So just wonderful. But um, uh, so I met with her. Um, this was, by the way, my diagnosis was May 18th. 2021. We are now June 22nd. So we're a little more than a month out from my diagnosis. And already things are starting to happen really fast. Met with Dr. Adamio, the oncologist, uh, last week or so. And she sent me to an interventional radiologist, Dr. Herman, who is in her office as well. He's the one who does uh, radiation treatment. So radiation Focused radiation on a tumor itself will shrink the tumor. And, and all the research shows that the smaller the tumor is, first of all, the less room it can take up in your digestive system and hopefully the less symptoms you have um, if, you're, if you have a colon, uh, colon tumor. Uh, but it also means your outcomes after surgery are much better. So if we, we can, the smaller we can get it, the less chance that there'll be some left over in there after they remove it and the faster your recovery is. So that's the point of the radiation therapy. Um, and then chemotherapy, which is taking drugs or medications. Um, I'm still, I still haven't had my tutorial. So I've scheduled a tutorial. Uh, it's a, a chemo teach session. It's a one hour session where they're gonna go over what chemotherapy is like. And we're using all these tools together to get the best outcomes because we're going by what statistically works best gets us the best outcomes. Now what Dr. Uh, Haramio did tell me, she said that most of our patients are early stage. And uh, so I'm assuming stage one or two. And she said most of them do really well. And that's even including that a lot of them are much older than me and in much worse health overall. So she said they may be 60 or 70, they may be sedentary diabetic smokers. So overall their health is not nearly as good as yours is, she said to me. So that would suggest that your outcomes could be better or should be good. But she said, let's wait and see, you know, we gotta get staging right. So staging is figuring out, hey, is the cancer just in one place or has it spread? Well, fast forward, I met with Dr. Uh, Herman, the interventional radiologist, I had an, a CT scan scheduled, an MRI scheduled to look elsewhere and see if the cancer has spread. Well, he has CT in his office, so he just did it right there. So we had the CT done last week and it found a lesion in my, in my liver. So uh, we know it's spread. The only question is that, is that the only place it's gone? I can't remember. I need to figure out if they looked at my whole chest and abdomen or if it was just pelvis and abdomen. But they found a lesion in the liver, which means I now have a biopsy scheduled on my liver this Friday, which would be, two, let's see, today, today is Tuesday. So it would be this Friday, so a couple of days from now. Um, and they'll stick a needle in there. I'll be partially sedated, which I'm heard, I've heard is what you want because that doesn't sound pleasant. And then they'll take some bits out of my liver and test them to see if they are cancer. And if so, did that come from the colon tumor that we found or is it its own separate one? And that's like a six hour process. I'll be partially sedated, so I had to take my morning off. I'm still working through all this, by the way. And um, 
tonight I have an MRI and I believe it is um, I believe it's pelvis and abdomen I'm not sure the orders are all in there and it will be done with contrast so the CT is done with contrast MRI is done with contrast and then just today they called me and said that they have a PET scan scheduled I think it's positive uh, I forget what that acronym stands for, but it's a different kind of imaging that sees different things that maybe an MR and CT won't. And I have that scheduled. All three done with contrast, which means you have IV, and they put something in you that circulates through you that makes the image turn up clearer. So with my CT, they gave me gadolinium, um, and it was not, it was really kind of a non-event. I don't like getting stuck by needles and I, I, I've had my first two IVs this month that I've ever had in my life. Um, but the staff are fantastic, they did a great job. So, and I didn't have any reactions to the gadolinium. I had a little warmth in the back of my throat but it was really a non-issue, recovered quickly from it. Um, so, so now I've got, I've got cancer in two places we know. We're gonna see if it's anywhere else. My PET scan is, let's see, MRI tonight, that'll give us some information tomorrow. I meet with my oncologist again. She'll be back from Hawaii. <laughs> and, she, and we'll just go over an overview of what my treatment plan looks like. Uh, it sounds like we're gonna start on chemo first um, and then maybe add in radiation at some point, I don't know. So I'll be able to update you on what that looks like and feels like. I'll try to take some video while I'm getting the chemo done. Maybe the radiation if they let me. Um, and just kind of show you guys what the whole process looks like so you get to see that I'm alive and uh, I'm handling it okay so you don't if you're friends and family you don't worry about me too much and and if you're about to go through this yourself hopefully it'll put your mind at ease about some of these things and, and get me, don't get me wrong I I'm not happy about <laughs> any of this stuff but I'm very optimistic I'm very optimistic um, uh, colorectal cancer is one of the cancers that has one of the best recovery rates. I'm starting off healthy to begin with. I'm super happy with my care team, so I feel like I'm in good hands. Um, and, uh, oh, interestingly, for the radiation therapy, they put some semi-permanent marks, like crosshairs, on me. I'll show you one of them. Um, if you can see that red X right there, I've got one on each hip, and I've got one right under my belly button. So when I do get radiation therapy, uh, the, that's how they will line, they'll line up the, the CT scan with lasers and use those as reference points so they can always hit the same spot every time. So let's see, uh, the docs tell me I should be able to work through most of this. Uh, there will be, I'm guessing we're gonna have three surgeries. So there's gonna be the bowel resection, that's one, where they take out the chunk of the colon that's bad and install the ileostomy bag. Then the second one is to remove the ileostomy bag. And then I'm guessing there's gonna be a third one if they need to remove part of my liver. And livers are supposed to grow back. I haven't, I haven't researched any of this stuff yet. I'm just gathering information. You're getting what I have. So, um, yes, yeah, so the, and there's gonna be, I think it's a three week recovery after the bowel resection. So I won't be able to work for three weeks. Then I think a two-week recovery after having the ileostomy removed. I don't know about a possible liver surgery and what that would recovery would look like or feel like, but I'll fill you in. And I think that's where we are. Uh, uh, my my mood. So I've been working full time, and uh, I mean honestly, the the thought of cancer so far has not freaked me out. It may, I mean, who knows? If we come back and get information, say, oh, it's everywhere, and you have six weeks to live, or something like that, I'm sure it will have a big effect on me. But right now, I just, I'm just like gung-ho, ready to kick this thing and do whatever it takes to fix it. So I've, I've switched to a super healthy diet, cut out all sugar and dairy and um, red meat, and um, eating lots of cancer-fighting foods. Um, I'm anemic right now because there is bleeding that goes along with this. So I've lost some blood, lost some iron. So I'm working on increasing my iron with lots of leafy greens and beans. And I'm looking for some other ways to supplement that as well. That don't make my other bowel symptoms worse. So, because uh, that can ir irritate stomach sometimes. Um, so I'm very, I, I can't stress enough. I feel very optimistic. Uh, this is an unplanned adventure. So not the way I had thought things were gonna go, but hey, it's where we are. 
and uh, I want to hit it head on. I'm ready to get my life back. And I feel like, I mean, as I go through my day every day, I feel like I'm like right on the verge of having an amazing active life again. And just to be clear, I've not been able to do any meaningful exercise. I, I love beach volleyball. I've not been able to play beach volleyball for probably a year. Just because the urgency, uh, the bathroom urgency when I'm upright or especially jostling around or bouncing, it's just overwhelming and I mean there's no way I could last. I can walk maybe a quarter of a mile before I need a bathroom break. So I know this all sounds very horrific. It just makes me that much more eager to get past this thing, get on with treatment, get to the other side of it get as good as I can be and get back into, I mean, beach volleyball is going to be a huge one. If I can play that, I can do anything. And then get back into the gym, travel, see friends and family. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to all those things again. Anyway, um, hopefully that wasn't too much at one time and too confusing. Expect updates. I'll shoot them periodically as new things happen. Um, and uh, let's see where this goes. Anyway, see you guys next time.